Hi guys, Manny on the fly here. Today we're going to talk about a little controversial subject, bead fishing. And not just bead fishing, but bead fishing with a fly rod. We're also going to do a second part where we're doing bead fishing with a fly rod in a small creek for steelhead with a lot of deadfall in the water, a lot of forestation around you and whatnot. So we're going to tackle that in two parts. And then after the explanation of the beads and how to rig your rod up, uh, we're going to go out to the uh, creek and uh, see if we can catch us a steelhead. So first of all, beads come in many different sizes and colors. As you can see here, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, orange in, in this one and different colors and, and uh, actually different um, patterns. Uh, some are a little matte finish, some are a little glossy. They do come in different sizes. Uh, these are number eight. Uh, that's what I usually fish. But uh, they come in uh, sixes, eights, tens, and even twelves. Uh, so you can match the hatch basically with um, your egg pattern. That's what we call it here, matching the hatch with your eggs. Now the first things first is usually in the beginning of the season when the steelhead start to run, usually around late September or whatnot, what I usually, from my experience, what I usually find is the uh, oranges, the light oranges uh, work the best. As the fall kicks in and also getting into the winter, that's when you start using the uh, darker colors, the pinks, uh, even some purples and uh, bright oranges uh, from there. So basically what we're looking at, and I'm going to actually do a little setup on my rod right now and show you how to rig one of these up. Now the one thing I do use, the one thing I do use, I, uh, sometimes I use a, uh, a tapered leader, a Zero X, and, but if the steel, especially in the beginning of the season, the steelhead are very, very strong. Uh, they're just coming out of the lake, they're getting into the stream, uh, they're very aggressive, they got a lot of power. And I find at times even the Zero X um, leaders with the tippet don't uh, hold the fish. Uh, they will snap you off instantly. Uh, now the reason I say snap it off instantly, a lot of people will disagree with me saying, no, you can hold the fish with a steelhead, a 10 pound steelhead with a 1X, 2X, 3X leader. Uh, yes, I agree with you, in, especially in a river when you have lots of room to fight the fish. When you have literally about a five foot, maybe a six foot section of a pool surrounded by deadfall. You really have no time to uh, play this fish out. You really got to hold it tight and hopefully you can get your net on the fish or hopefully you're with someone that can actually net this fish for you. And that's why I go to a Maxima, okay? And this is a Maxima liter uh, tippet material, which is a 15 pound test. So straight, straight uh, tippet. Uh, with a perfection knot to the fly line and I usually run about eight feet to start but let's get into the rigging of this egg pattern so basically we're gonna first of all we're gonna slide these eggs have little or these beads sorry have little uh, holes through them uh, so you can put your leader through now, your preference on hook, yes, there are some variables out there to you know match the size of the bead to the hook. It's a trial and error, whatever works for you. Um, make sure the hook's not too small, of course, but uh, again, not too big. So we have the bead on our leader, just sliding back and forth. What I'm gonna use with this number eight bead, I'm gonna use a uh, for my preference, is a number six hook. Doesn't matter what type of hook you're using as far as uh, manufacturer or whatnot. So I'm just going to uh, tie this on here. Okay. Do about a six turn clinch knot. Now what you'll find with this uh, Maxima 15 pound tippet is very thick it's not like your usual tapered leader give it a lot of uh, lubricant there okay now we're just going to uh, snip off the little tag end here 
okay so now we got our hook tied on and we have a floating bead now we're gonna peg the bead now a lot of people use toothpicks that's fine um, I prefer these um, these silicone rubber toothpicks they are tapered on both ends and they come in different colors you can match uh, the color to the bead or they come in clear so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick that through here and we're gonna pull it tight what's great about this having uh, tapered ends on both sides what you want to do is the tag that you pulled through you want to cut that now this one at the back you didn't pull in a uh, quite a not enough uh, but you didn't put it put it all the way in so you can reuse this this end so make sure you keep that and get your snippets as close as you can without clipping your tippet material now we'll keep that for later now this is wedged in there pretty good now rule of thumb to a certain degree is you want to have at least you know four fingers uh, from the hook to the bead it all depends again what I'm talking about when you're when you're fishing small creeks with a lot of deadfall for steelhead um, you're, we're gonna put on some weight and that's a little a little different thing too um, what you want to do is you what I prefer um, is having about I'd say about two inches now this two inches I find is is really good uh, the fish clamp down on the bead and as they turn right as they turn they're going to hook themselves in the side of the mouth which is really good to fight the fish and they don't swallow the bead and they sorry they don't swallow the hook so uh, mortality rate on the uh, steelhead is uh, very minimal so again uh, you know play around with the uh, difference in uh, length between the hook and the bead now from there and, this, and I'll show you again I'll show you on the creek why we're using a heavy split shot and very close to the bead because we don't have enough room to play a pool uh, a ripple going down a seam uh, we have like at, at times we have five to six feet of a pool and we have to get the bead down to the, to the level of the fish and that's why we're using split shot yes if we had a lot of room uh, I probably wouldn't even use the split shot I'd probably just have this bead floating normally or naturally like like rope so usually put this on approximately I would say about uh, six to eight inches and again, depending on the, the depth of the pool and how fast the current is, that's what you're, you're going to have, right? You can adjust your bead, uh, sorry, you can adjust your split shot to uh, different lengths uh, to, again, adjust for the speed of the water and the depth and how much room you have to play with, okay? So that's the simple bead setup. Again, they do come in different sizes. They do come in different colors, and you'll find that experimenting with different colors, especially if you're spot fishing, if you, if you see a steelhead, and um, you know you're trying a say a number eight uh, orange bead, and you're putting it in front of their face, and they're not taking it, switch to a different color, switch to a different size, switch to something smaller. They may take it. Um, they may be leader shy. You may have to switch off uh, heavy tippet to lighter tip it and uh, sometimes that's all it takes so that's the setup again very simple I know it's controversial but I'll tell you right now it does work can you land the fish in a small creek with a lot of deadfall steelhead averaging 10 plus pounds it's very very difficult but can you get them on oh for sure and we're gonna go out there and uh, I'll show you that we can get them on but can we keep them is a different story okay so again have any comments uh, please leave me a comment go to my website mannyonthefly.com uh, there's a contact section where you can leave a comment tell me what you think agree disagree that's fine again uh, it is bead fishing with a fly rod in a small creek 
with a lot of deadfall and that's the difference there are I know there's a lot of videos out there with um, showing the uh, bead fishing with a ply rod uh, a little bit different uh, setup uh, and that is because they got more room to play with uh, around uh, southern Ontario on these small creeks with a lot of deadfall you don't have a lot of room to play them so you got to get them hooked and get them netted very quickly uh, we're going to go down the, on the creek now and we're going to uh, see what we can do so again mannyonthefly.com and follow the adventure well we have our bead set up ready to go again we went with the uh, orange and we're going to see if we can catch us some uh, steelhead. Well, we are in one of the most difficult spots to land one. Deadfall galore in the water. And up on a bank again, about 10 feet. Where are you going? Okay, that's a big boy. Oh. Keep it up. There we go. Okay. He's holding. Well, there's a perfect example of what I was talking about, how difficult it is to catch steelhead in this small creek, or any small creek for that matter, with a lot of deadfall. He wrapped me around so many logs. Wow. Well, back at the scene of the crime, and again, very difficult to uh, get one out of there. And I see there's more deadfall in the water, which is always fun. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. See if I can get down here and I'm just gonna hold them here. Whoa. Tell me he didn't snag me again. <sighs> yeah, he snagged me again. Well, that was fun, anyways. All right. Snag me right under that log. Oh. Wow. 
That Maxima is some heavy duty stuff. Oh, that was fun. Okay. That's 0 for 9. Call it what it is. Okay. Like I said, very difficult. Beads do work. Orange, number eight right now. And uh, again, another example how difficult a small creek with a lot of deadfall, when you're above the, the uh, fish, above the water, and trying to hook these monsters. As you can see, hooked it, took off, had them, and uh, I had no, no recourse there. So we're going to rejig and uh, try it again.